keep forgetting to plug this thing in. It's the hair dryer in the heated cabinet. I turn it off when I'm doing a video because it's noisy in the background. Then I forget to plug it back in. What I want to get done today is I want to get the unit that I talked about before for above here built. Several times I sat down at the computer in SketchUp and started to draw up a plan for it but stalled out. I just really couldn't, I don't know, it's because it's so simple in my mind, it's almost like it's not worth the effort. But, so I decided to come out here today and just grab the material, set it up on the saw horses and start measuring and cutting. Just like I used to do back before I even knew about SketchUp. So I've drawn up a bit of a rudimentary plan on the plywood there. And that's exactly the way I used to do things. Rapidly sketch something up and then start making it. Often that would get me to something like this here. Where, I mean, I've been using this since I built it. And I have no complaints about it. I don't think I do very much differently. And other times, it would lead me to something that I couldn't use, you know, for any long amount of time. Like those cabinets that I just took down from the corner. So the idea here is a very simple one. It's just a straight unit that goes across, hanging off the wall. It's got to be attached to the wall. I was originally going to make it attached to the top of this cabinet, but then I thought, okay, the miter saw sled is already in here, and it's actually probably a really good place for it. The only problem is I pile junk inside it. So to avoid that, what I'll do is I'll make the other cabinet down just above it, and then I'll put stuff inside the cabinet and I won't put stuff inside the slab. How I'm going to rip the width, all I need to do is cut them the length. Do that on my miter saw. I'm going to have the sides go up and past the panels that make up the top and the bottom. So these panels will be 71 inches long. Cut it. Now the idea is to get this out of one sheet. I, there's no reason why I can't build a whole unit plus shelves inside there from one sheet of plywood. So I made it 16 inches deep. That gives me three strips out of the sheet of plywood. Uh, the height of it is around 18 inches. The width is 72 like I already said. So the way it's going to be is end panel, end panel. Center dividing panel will actually give it some strength. Cleats along the back near the top will attach it directly to the wall. No back in there at all. Just, you know, open you can use the drywall at the back. So this is the edge that I cut on the miter saw. The other edge is factory. I want to make sure that it's square. It's always a good idea to check to make sure the factory sheets of plywood that you buy are square. I've had a few that are not. Now I'm going to put the factory edge up against the fence and cross cut it to 17 inches wide. So that's going to be the center divider in the cabinet. And what I want to do now is I want to draw a line across the outside to give me a guide so that I can drive my nails and screws in the right place. Then I'll mark another line on the other side to show me the edge of the piece of plywood. And then I'll attach it with some brads first and then some screws. Then I can do the same with the top panel in the same way. I didn't use any glue there. It's not really needed for this, but you're using nails to line it up. They hold it a little bit, yes. The screws do all the heavy lifting though. So I've got the center divider put in. You might be wondering why I did that. And it's to get an accurate dimension for the end panels. Here I can see that once I look over my glasses, or underneath them, that it's 17 and 7 eighths. Okay, very similar deal here on the end. 
no glue, just nails and screws. First thing I'm going to do is tack it in place with the brad. If you've been using drywall screws to put things together, you know that they break quite readily. A uh, good option is to buy flooring screws. These are one and a quarter inch. They've got a very aggressive thread and will not break when you drive them in. They're also fairly inexpensive, just a little bit more than drywall. Here's a little thing about impact drivers. I see a lot of guys, you know, when they're driving screws, take the trigger and plunge it all the way in. And what that does is gives all the power to the motor. And it also wears out the switch prematurely. These switches are actually variable speed so that you give it a little bit of gas and it turns a little bit. And see, I can stop that actually. So that puts less stress on the switch. It puts less stress on the gearbox, the hammer and anvil on the inside. And it also drives the screw in better rather than, you know, this, try that. Well, that's the basic cabinet done. It's got some cleats that are going to go in here. These are going to get attached in the same way, except I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the top cleats. I don't want the cabinet to separate from the cleat and pull off the wall. The cleat will be screwed to the studs in the wall, so it needs to be solidly attached to the cabinet itself. Go ahead, ask me what kind of glue this is. cabinet is finished all I need to do is hang it up and before I can do that I need to find the studs in the wall I got my stud locator here it's a two inch nail I can look at the wall because I really didn't do a really super good job of taping I can see some of the places where the uh, screws were taped over and if I tap I can see that the the stud is probably right, right. Ideally, you do this behind where the cabinet's going, but here in the workshop, I'm not really too, too concerned. And there's the stud right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come over and try to find the edge of it. And I think that first hole I was right beside it. So here's my stud right here. Would have been a lot better if this stuff wasn't in the way, but I'm not about to move it for this. I've determined the bottom of the cleat. I made a mark here, and it clears my you know, acoustic panel up there. So I'm just going to put up a bit of a level line here on the wall, like that. And then I've got a mark here that represents the center of the stud. So it's going to measure over 16 inches and then 16 inches to mark the stud locations. To hold the cabinet up on the wall, I'm not going to set up anything crazy again. I'm just going to drive some two and a half inch screws most of the way in, right on that line, right below that line and into the stud. Hopefully it's there, and it is, and then I'll be able to put the cabinet up and set it on those screws and that will hold it up while I get some screws in to hold it up there. One good thing is, is that it's not that heavy. So I want to add a bit of a face frame to the cabinet to strengthen the lower shelf and to keep everything in line and make it look 
better because you know the rough edge of the plywood it doesn't look bad but it could be improved so I've got this old 2x4 that I just got out of my shed and I'm going to cut it up into pieces to use for that I figure I don't need to make the face frame that thick around 5 8 of an inch would be enough I want to make it as wide as I possibly can but I want to get everything for the face frame from this one piece 2x4 I've cut the pieces to length now, I'm just going to get some glue on there. And I'll just get the strip put in place, line up with my mark, and nail it on. Alright, that's it. They are, it is done. All I need to do is make the shelves and put it in there. It's going to be one shelf here, one shelf on the other side. I'm going to use a method very similar to what I did in the heated cabinet to hold the shelves up. There won't be any shelf pins or anything like that. A piece of plywood on the end, on each end of the shelf, and that keeps it up. If I want to change the height, I'll just make a different piece of plywood. Simple.